Okay, looks like it's saying starting. Yep, there it is. Dottie Yay. is recording the call. How's okay. that for fun? Awesome. That is exciting. Wow. Okay, technology's fun. <laughs> Indeed. Awesome. Okay, well, let me get my little notepad so that I remember what questions I have to ask you because I know I won't remember if I don't look at it. <laughs> sure. All right. Okay. So this is Dottie's world. Yes, it is. And uh, yeah, my channel used to be a different name, but um, well, I started it as a flat earth channel, but then I kind of didn't know what to make. I like lost a little steam as what to make flat earth videos about. So then I just started making like random videos and changed my channel name. And um, yeah, I don't know, going from there. So, right. so yeah, it's uh, we'll see, see where it goes from here, but I'm super excited to have you on. It's you're the first person who's ever been on my channel. So, um, Yay. so yeah, I'm, uh, and I'm you really, chose me. I, I, I'm stuck awesome. you. <laughs> I know. Right. <laughs> yeah. Funny. I, uh, when I came to flat earth, there was enough people making videos that I never ended up on team Eric Dubay. I got on your team uh, first and I've really never watched any of his stuff. And uh, well, it's, it's, it's like... not bad stuff, actually. I mean, Eric's got some good stuff out there, but then he goes off the rail and exactly goes That's... after demographics. It's like, totally. <laughs> right? It's like you'd think you'd get the hint after your channel had been absolutely wiped out twice by YouTube. It's, right. Exactly. Yeah. And like when I, when I came to it, um, yeah, he was starting to go like super crazy and everybody was a shill. And um, yeah. I was just like, you know, I just don't even want to watch watch that. And so luckily at that point, I found your videos. And um, and yeah, we actually met at the Muckleteo meetup uh, last year. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. I met you very briefly before right. you left. Right, I do remember uh, that. Yep. Yeah, so, so yeah, that was awesome. That, I was super glad I made it out to that. But cool. um but yeah, so, okay. Um, so yeah, most people probably know you from Behind the Curve. Um, I'm sure you've gotten a ton of, ton of, uh, you know, flow to your channel from that. It, um, yeah, everything kind of exploded. That uh, Anybody that didn't know what Flat Earth was about figured, figured out the details once Behind the Curve came out. And exactly. really, it wasn't until Netflix bought it right that, totally. that, it, that it took off because i mean we were already on itunes and amazon and google play and youtube red but i had no idea that everybody under the age of 30 owns netflix i had no yeah, idea yeah it's, it's it's ridiculous i don't even like i hate net netflix honestly because well, it's just, i mean i i, mean, I, spent, I like I, documentaries really but like, i spent a year that, yeah. watching netflix when i was living up in canada and it's got a lot of content. People don't don't realize that Netflix currently is the biggest producer in Hollywood. Right. Yeah. Uh, they they got so much money from that fifteen bucks a month streaming service that they couldn't they didn't even know where to spend it. So they just yeah. started buying more projects uh, in Hollywood and creating their own series, which of course made more content, which made more. So yeah, it became cyclical to where they just started buying everything they could. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I pretty much, yeah, I'll watch like documentaries on there, but that's really about it. Other than that, I just watch YouTube and, uh, but, but yeah, I think, um, I think there's, you know, there's obviously a lot of negative propaganda around flat earth and what everybody thinks about it. And I kind of love that everybody has a different kind of model that they that they adhere to and um and sure. so yeah i just kind of wanted to ask you a few questions about what you think and that way you know if people are assuming this flat earther thinks that or whatnot then you'd be like oh well here actually he thinks this and but throw, yeah I just throw it at me it. it's it's okay. good timing because uh i am in that sort of mode because i'm working on my second book oh awesome right that's there's, awesome. there's been some demand for it. And so, I mean, and really the timing is pretty good because now I've got, all, you know, four years under my belt since this thing started and I know pretty much everything. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I'm wired in. So seriously. Why not? Yeah. And yeah. that's uh, 
one of my questions is how are you not tired of having these kind of interviews yet? Um, Cause it seems like you, you do nothing but interviews and I love that you're, you're always down for it. It's awesome. Uh, but I, I'm not, I'm not tired of it because every interview is slightly different. The venue is slightly different mm -hmm. and look, part of my job is to get the word out. Right. Oh yeah. There's days where it's like, Oh God. I mean, you get questions like the, the Australian television thing I just did where they brought on a guy from NASA, you know, a NASA mm -hmm. engineer from, from the Southern hemisphere. <laughs> and he's just throwing out the same tired arguments. It's like, well, what about the fee? I mean, I was really surprised. Like he latched onto the Felix uh, Bumgarner Red Bull jump. Oh geez. <laughs> and like, what? And then he admitted that he, he was, he's one of the guys that works on the high altitude balloon, NASA projects where they lift satellites into space via balloon. It's like, and I, I almost wanted to say to him, I was like, you, you're helping me by admitting this, you know? Um, <laughs> so everything he was throwing at me and, and the audacity to say that NASA is a civilian organization, oh even gosh. though it's almost entirely air force. And, it, exactly. and it's like his argument was, well, there's civilians that work there. And it's like, y yeah, they're called subcontractors. I mean, the <laughs> Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, they all have civilian subcontractors. That exactly. does not mean they're a civilian operation. Um, but no, no, I don't, I don't get tired of it because, again, that's, that's what I do. Uh, I, whatever, for whatever reason I was built for it, uh, the training, the software training that I did for 20 years really, really helped me prepare for something like this wh where, you know, I would fly out to different companies and train on the same software. You know, but it was a slightly different audience and it was never exactly the same thing twice. Right. So, no, I, 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 I do not mind at all. It is the role that I have been given and by God, I'm going to embrace it. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. You know, I, I, that's just, that's so true. It's like, you just have to, you have to know your lane and just, just be okay with that. And, yeah. you know, and yeah, I, I love what you do. I think it's fantastic. So mm -hmm. yeah, right. keep it up. Um, Thank you. So um, let's see, how about, I didn't write this in any, any order at That's all. That's all right. You can jump all over, all over um, you want. So let's go back a little bit. Um, do, I want to do a quick, just kind of overview of who you are, how you found Flat Earth, and why you started your channel. Sure. Uh, the channel was actually built years before, like a lot of people, when they got into YouTube. You have to, you have to have a YouTube channel to really comment on things. So, you know, the I was there when YouTube first started. I'm old, so I, well, older anyway. Uh, I was there when the internet was, you know, in its infancy. So when YouTube came out, it's like, oh, that seems like a pretty good idea. Nobody knew if it was really going to take hold, but like a lot of things, it did. Um, so the channel was out there for a long time, but I never posted anything on it. I just commented and hit thumbs up and thumbs down. I mean, that's the hook. It's like if you want to even rate something, you got to create a channel. I mean, yeah, you can go on YouTube and just watch stuff, but it's interactive at all. You have to create a channel. Uh, and then because of YouTube, actually, after 2001, the whole 9-11 thing, I was into just about every conspiracy you could think of. Uh, and really, until the internet started going uh, high speed, we weren't sharing a lot of information when it came to videos. So in that time from 2001 up until about 2014, I absorbed so much of the internet that I pretty much have, and still do, I have an opinion on just about every conspiracy you can think of. Some I love, some I hate, some I'm like, eh. Uh, but that, and, and to where I got bored, I mean, I covered them all. It's like, you know, how many times can you look at, I don't know, the old stuff like UFOs and Loch Ness and Bigfoot and stuff, stuff like that. And then the new stuff, you know, that the tie, they're tied to governments or just about every American war. And I mean, look, it, it, Napoleon said it best, uh, history is just lies that are agreed upon. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and which is better than his history is, is written by the winners, but along the same lines. And so when in 2014, I, you know, everybody knew about flat earth, everybody does still, you know, I have yet to run into a single person that has never heard the term. Mm -hmm. So I, I mean, flat earth is one of those things where you go up to somebody, seriously, I've never said, Hey, what about flat earth? And the person says, really flat earth? <laughs> never heard of it. Mm, they yeah. know roughly what it is, you know, and that is, oh, it's something ridiculous. It's that old school, you know, cosmic waterfall where ships are falling off the edge of the earth into space. Mm -hmm which is so weird. 
Um, and so everybody hates it. Nobody wants to look at it. And I thought, well, I, every once in a while I'll get caught in it. Sort of like why, why I answer my phone sometimes, even now, even though my phone just doesn't stop ringing. <laughs> I, every once in a while, if I'm in a quiet place and nothing's happening, if the phone rings, I'll look at the city. I'll be like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to answer it. See what happened. <laughs> you know, kind of like a, awesome. the mis- the mystery box. Right. Uh, and so I looked at Flat Earth in 2014. I thought, okay, this is ridiculous. It's silly. I'm, I, I'm not going to go anywhere with this thing. And but, but it's like, okay, you know what? I should shut this. I could shut this down in a weekend. And... The weekend came and went, and I still hadn't shut it down, and weeks turned to months, and next thing you know, it's 2015, and I gave up. Uh, I said, okay, screw you guys. I'm going (laughs) to make a series. I'm going to ask the internet, because what I did, what I had learned over time, if you guys don't know, uh, the internet is extremely intelligent as a hive mind. Mm -hmm. They miss nothing mm-hmm. and that is if it's if it's there's a piece of media out there they will analyze it and overanalyze it and put it under a microscope so i thought okay sure made a series of videos called flat earth clues put it out there and said internet hive mind tell me where i screwed up because <laughs> i can't prove the globe in a court of law anymore and almost immediately people started getting a hold of me saying yeah you know what this is super interesting. You may be onto something because I, you know, the clues were made with no mathematics, mm-hmm. no scientific experiments. It was really just connecting the dots. I treated it like a like a um, a movie plot where you kind of like um, the older older movies, like The Usual Suspect, like detective movies, where all of a sudden you have these flashbacks going to like how the crime happened, mm, yeah. like like Ocean <laughs> like Ocean's Eleven. Right. It's like yeah. okay, here's how it all went down, and I connected all these things. I said, look, they all point towards the same thing, which is the world isn't what you think it is, and that's how it started. And uh, and and up until that point. Were there other people in it? Yes, there were. Had they made a dummy's guide or a flat earth one on one book? No, they hadn't. I was the first one to make something that anyone could understand. Mm-hmm. Literally just anybody on the street. It's like, you know what? If you hadn't seen anything about flat earth, here's what and I made that deliberately so that the internet hive mind could come back and tell me where I went wrong. And then I put my name and my phone number and my address and all that stuff, which women should never, ever do even ever. today. Yeah, ever. <laughs> and uh, men shouldn't even really do it. And and really, I mean, I was really hoping an academic would shut it down, and they never did. So and here we are four years later, and podcasts and a documentary and a book and uh, all, you know. I lost count of interviews after a certain number because they just kept rolling in so fast. Um, everything from podcasts to major networks to, you know, I mean, you know, little groups like National Geographic and uh, the BBC and ABC and all those fun, fun guys. So that's awesome. So, yeah, yeah it's just so a that's how I, that's explosion how it happened. of fun. <laughs> like, yeah. Again, yeah. five years ago, if you would have told me, oh, yeah, by the way, you're going to be doing public speaking engagements. You're going to like this year <laughs> I'm doing nine conferences oh, in God. five countries. And it's like, what? It's... And you're going to be doing this on Flat Earth. Right, yeah. Just... Like, you are a crazy person <laughs> to even suggest uh... such a thing, and yet it's a reality. So it's... here we are. Yeah, it's so awesome how it just comes into our life, and then you you just can't get away from it. It's like, I, I've tried to go back to the globe, like, when I just got, like, flat out depressed because I didn't know how to reach people with it i'm like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna watch a bunch of like science podcasts and like try and get back into space stuff and you just can't see it the same like you can't can't. there's there's nothing to go back to Um, exactly there was a line you know it's a line from um uh the it was the matrix it's it's the perfect red pill blue pill thing which is once once you learn it you can't unlearn it Mm-hmm. And so yeah. uh, what I told people is like, look, you can try, which is why we have a 99% retention rate. And that even that's low. I think it's 99.9 where you try to go back to the globe and it's just this empty cardboard box mm-hmm. with, with a few pieces of packing popcorn in it when you get there. Yeah. And it's like, oh, right. That's why I left. Exactly. And then, yeah, you... then you're in trouble because then, then you've got to, you've got to decide. It's like, okay, do I just ignore and go back to my life and and it kind of turns into the old saying once a smoker always a smoker mm, you yeah. you can't you you can't there's nothing there's nothing you can do to go back to the globe once you yep. go hate to say you know you know once you go flat you never go back it's, <laughs> it's too cliche but it's right. true it it's is, true yeah. once you're in 
you're in now your enthusiasm may wane and be like, well, I'm going to go back to my normal life and do that. But it's always in your head. Exactly. Always in your head at that point. If somebody brings it up to you, you're like, oh, yeah, let me tell you about it. So, <laughs> yeah, since I started my channel, I've just gone back and forth, whether I'm like, do I really want to do this channel? Like, is it enough enough for me or like is the work worth it and and then every time I think of shutting down my channel I just get sad because I'm like well what about all those 49 people who decided to follow my channel it's like <laughs> obviously I said something that they well, you know they want to follow I'll, it for I'll, and uh I'll, it's called Dottie's World right mm -hmm, yep uh, and it's on YouTube yep it is yeah okay well I tell you what as soon as I put this thing up I will um I will sub to it if I'm not already subbed Okay. And I think you are actually. I, yeah. I may be. And I will also uh I will put this the audio recording on my channel and it'll refer. So anybody listening to this right now on my channel, go sub to Dottie's World. She's a really nice person <laughs> and she's flat. So hey, you know, hashtag same team. There you go. Yep. <laughs> another another flat earther to join the ranks. So, yeah. Well, I mean, you're you're already in. I've been, you're, yeah, you're, I've been you're already here a while, in. Look, yeah. if you're making if you're making videos on YouTube, you're you're definitely one of the hardcore. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. It's all right. Just, I mean, uh, don't 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 feel bad if if your subs don't you know ramp up that quickly right away. Mm -hmm. Part of it's content, but remember, there's so many people getting into it now. Exactly. That, yep. I mean, again, you, you've seen it. You type in Flat Earth in YouTube, and the top 40 videos are all established, verified channels mm -hmm. that are that are monstrous, that are covering the topic Definitely. in one way or the other. And and I know people get mad. And it's like, well, we don't need those, man. And, you know, they they, they come down on us like, yeah, but they if you have 2 million subscribers and you're covering Flat Earth, the exposure is is priceless. It, it, yeah, it's up through the roof for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, okay. So if you could just tell me kind of like your model of the earth, like what you think, what you think it looks like. I should use the Lewis Black line, you know, Lewis Black, the comedian, when he went on Comedy Central, it's like, you know, maybe the earth is a chalupa sitting inside a <laughs> snow globe. Uh, no, no, mine's really, really simple. It is uh, a flat. It, it basically is, for lack of a better word, a big snow globe. That's what we're talking about here, where the earth isn't a spinning ball covered with water flying through space and, you know, in, in possible directions. It is a flat circular disk that is it's basically a giant it's a building with a giant saltwater lake inside it and inside that saltwater lake are a bunch of islands which we call continents uh it's got walls and a floor and a ceiling uh does the it could the top be a dome structure yeah sure but uh, around the outside it's probably a box mm. because uh of the engineering problem which is engineers don't think in circles computers cannot think in circles mm. they can only think in angles uh, which is why pixels are square. Most people don't know that. You know, it's like yeah, you can make pixels as small as you want, but they're still squares. That makes uh, sense. And so, uh, in fact, uh, like the perfect example would be the Hollywood studio, the Hollywood backlot building. They're all giant boxes, and then you can build whatever you want on the inside of them. You know, so if you want to make a saltwater lake inside a Hollywood studio and then put a dome on the inside, that's fine. But on the outer markers, uh, it's probably square. Call it, which is why Rob Skiba likes to call it God's footstool, hmm. which is, uh, I think, actually pretty ac pretty accurate. Uh, and then that kind of falls into, not so that we should delve into the biblical stuff too much, but the whole four corners of the earth, hmm. the uh, you know the four angels hol holding back the winds at the four corners, and so on and so on. So, But the short version, snow globe, there you go. Nice. Uh, the, the dome could be, but it's not as, but the, I don't think the arc's as high as a snow globe because mm -hmm. the, even the, the best, uh, the lowest altitude stuff uh, from Operation Fishbowl where the atomic testing was done, I think that was at 500 kilometers and it could go up to several thousand. But remember, if this thing's 20,000 miles wide, give or take, then the dome is going to be really, really shallow. And mm -hmm. from the outside, it could even look like a sports stadium. Because mm -hmm. that's what we do with sports stadiums. You know, they're wide, but they're also not very high. Because why would you have to make them very high? Right. Yeah. Football. The, you can only you only have to make it as high as a baseball is hit, really. Mm -hmm. And so that's not very high. Yeah, I mean, really, it's like as high as planes fly. Like I would think that 
if there's a dome, it wouldn't need to be a whole lot higher than, oh, than no. the planes, yeah, yeah, yeah. really. Um, Remember, air, uh, commercial airlines cap out. I mean, and yeah, that's the low end. Uh, commercial airlines cap out at 10 miles. Spy mm -hmm. planes, if you believe them, cap out at about 20 miles. And I mean, yeah, you could go higher than that. But the point is the civilian world will never get higher than 10 miles. Mm -hmm. So yeah. all you have to do is make it hundreds of miles high. And not and that meant again, that's not very far that's, in the in the ratio and, mm -hmm. and that's it. So anyway, yeah. there you go. Interesting. Okay. All right. So um if there is a dome, uh what kind of stuff do you think it might be made of? Mm, take your pick. It's dealer's mm -hmm. choice. Uh let's see, high frequency, force field, electromagnetic. Mm -hmm. Uh, unified field, heavy element, heavy water, whatever it is, it's impenetrable. Nice. The United States and the Soviet Union tried with their weapons uh, for the better part of four years straight. Uh, and if atomic weapons can't get through it, well, then brute force isn't going to work. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the Americans have s since then tried different tactics. I think HARP, I think the secondary or primary usage of HARP was to break through it electromagnetically. And now I think they're trying to work through it with CERN, mm -hmm. which is instead of trying to break through it with brute force, maybe something more elegant, like trying to open up a door through it, which mm -hmm. is an interesting concept. So I don't, whatever it's made out of, it is very, very tough. Uh, if it was me, I would make it a soft barrier with negative physics, meaning uh, as you flew towards it, you would never run into it like a like a brick wall. I think the physics would either bend you away from it mm. or would slow you down to where you would have to turn away. So that way, you wouldn't just be blindsided flying along, flying along like, mm -hmm. like, a, like a bird into a windshield. Imagine if you had the technology so that the, the, instead of the bird flying into the windshield, it would be diverted off. It would mm -hmm. just be spun off with uh, some sort of negative gravity. That that's kind of funny. Um, I used to be super super into Harry Potter, and there's actually a spell in the books that they put on um, different like castles and stuff to make the Muggles purposely get away from them. Sure. Like, as soon as they get near that area, they remember an appointment that they are late for, and then they turn around and go the other way. And, yeah. Uh, but so, it's yeah, but it's your yeah, choice. That's... So you don't think anything mm -hmm. sinister. Same thing with Antarctica, mm -hmm. by the way. Antarctica is just a giant, horrible, hostile place that screams, go away. Mm, and, exactly. and you will turn around on, on your own on your own behalf, meaning if the icebergs don't get you, you know, don't turn you around, mm -hmm. the sheer coastline wall will. Mm -hmm. If it's not that, it's going to be the snow and ice, no animal life, no plant life. If it's yep. not that, it's the fact that most of it sits at around 14,000 feet elevation <laughs> and altitude sickness kicks in at about uh, 7,000. Mm -hmm. And if it's not that, it's the sheer <laughs> distance of how far you have to go out. Remember, mm -hmm. you actually, the government looked for 30 years, uh, you know, until you finally just run out of gas or energy. And it's like, ah, that's it. We're turning around. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Yeah, that's I had, I had a thought as you were saying that and then it and then it escaped. Um, oh, yeah. About Antarctica. Um, you know, I kind of feel like that is Antarctica is like the just the magician's misdirection on the right. globe for us. It's like right now with flat earthers, especially like everybody is obsessed with, is there a wall? Where is it? Is there land beyond? Is the, you know, what's going on with the wall? And I personally am more interested in like, well, what's going on with the North? Like if everybody's saying, Oh, Hey, look over here, look over here at the South. Like, hmm, well, what's happening up North? Like anything, anything interesting there, you know, that's, that's kind of where, where sure. I think is, uh, but cause yeah, like, uh, what do you think about more land possibly beyond? Oh, our, absolutely. Our, 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 absolutely. Yeah. More land. The only yeah. question is, is it sealed off from us to where nobody can get in or out? I mean, mm -hmm. that's what I would do. If I was going to make something like this, people speculated, well, you know, there's there's ancient civilizations that can come in and out and visit with us, but they can they can breach the dome. Yeah, maybe. I don't know if I would do it that way. I would make the dome sealable to where everyone that's in here with us was in here from, since the beginning. Older civilizations, mm -hmm. previous versions of us. But do I think there's lands outside? Yeah. I love that's... the thousand-year-old map. Uh, I can't remember if it was Chinese or Japanese where there's continents there's a whole bunch of continents on the outside of the barrier mm -hmm. 
Oh, and yeah. they're they're all massive continents is easily as big as Africa. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I love that whole concept, and I have no doubt this is not not only are we not the pe- first people to rent this apartment, but there uh, this would not be a one off. Mm-hmm. There's there is much 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 more out there. Yeah. Than, than anyone knows. Yeah, I think that I think that too. Um, I don't know if you've uh, listened to any of Martin Kenny's uh, presentations about the cosmic egg. Um, I have. I have. I his stuff is it's it's like where your stuff is very much entry level. His is like the next 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 level some of right. some of it is just so in depth but um but yeah i love his kind of the theories about you know possibly the the van allen belts like shifting and maybe there are times that they can open up and that we could possibly go go sure. through them it just has to be at the right time um sure why not and yeah he too is pretty interested in like hey what's going on with the north up there and um but yeah i love i love that kind of kind of alternate theory stuff that's really awesome cool but, okay let's see where is this question um i think you touched on it a little bit but um what do you think of uh creation as far as flat earth goes huh my thing actually just stopped that's weird oh. no 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 you're good you're good you're oh, recording okay. you're recording and i can rip off of that that's weird Perfect. though my audio recording literally just shut down oh i know why it's because you started doing your thing that's okay not (laughs) not a big deal i can uh, i can kill mine it's not a problem at all anyway sorry what what are my thoughts on creation yes oh did i lose you looks like you froze maybe uh Everything good? Yep, it was frozen for a second, but you're All good right. now. I'm going to kill. Yeah, Skype. Uh, yeah, it was after you. You know what? I should have known better. If uh, if I record audio on my side and you start recording Skype on your side, it will uh, it will freeze my uh, freeze my audio recording. But it's okay, not a big deal. So because it still says up there, Dottie is recording. Perfect. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So. I, I think the Bible is a flat earth book. Uh, mm-hmm. I touched on that in the clues. In fact, I couldn't even make too many of the clues before the, the hardcore Christian community came at me and said, you're dancing around this issue. You've got to address <laughs> God and creation. And Rob Skiba was the guy that really got me going on that because he 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 couldn't believe it either. And he's a big right. biblical prophecy guy. And then finally, he just went through everything with a fine tooth comb, chapter and verse, and he made a website called testingtheglobe.com. Mm. And in it, he he pointed out the only verse that anyone biblically, and you got to remember, and, and I, we, I can't stress this enough, not, at least half of the American flat earth community is biblical, Christian in nature. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I'm not, again, I cannot condemn the, the other four major religious houses, that being uh, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, and Islam. But the Christians definitely have an advantage here because there's a lot of stories that lean towards flat earth. Mm-hmm. Um, but the the one passage that doesn't is not really up for debate because it's Isaiah 40, 22, which says, he who sitteth upon the circle of the mm. earth. Well, in the ancient mm-hmm. in the ancient Hebrews, circle is not three-dimensional. Mm-hmm. And it's it's it we all know this. In fact, in our language, Circle is circle. Your dinner plate is circular. Your dining room table is circular. Uh, it is not a ball. It is not a sphere. It is not a globe. Yeah. And pastors, in fact, I did a show just recently um, because there's a, there's a story out of Canada that really interested me. Uh, the promoter, the, the woman who promoted the Calgary conference, she is being asked to leave the congregation of the biggest church in Canada. Huh. Because uh. they, they, you know, a lot of churches, they get nervous about this. Pastors are getting nervous. Because you don't want, do you really want that flattered sticker put on your, on your congregation? Mm-hmm. Because other, remember it's, it's competitive. Other congregations, other churches would be like, that church believes in flat earth. Right. <laughs> They're idiots. You should come over here and be at our church. Um, but every story in the Bible, every major story hints, it leans in that direction. And Rob Skiba is a really, and, and Zen Garcia and Robbie Davidson and uh, just about every, every, I mean, we've got literally 
uh, all Christian flat earth conferences that are happening. And I'll be attending uh, my first one this year in Ohio. Nice. Uh, but like the, the story of Joshua uh, holding the sun and the moon in the sky, you know, pausing the sun basically while oh, he slays geez. more more evidence. <laughs> that is so much easier to do in an enclosed system than it is trying to stop a solar system. Uh, the uh, the story of Babel, you know, the Tower of Babel, where is that going? Mm -hmm. if, if it's on a spinning globe that's also moving around the sun, it's actually never in the same place twice. So why, how can that actually be a bridge to heaven if it's not going anywhere? Um, and just about every passage you can think of, you know, Genesis, you know, the firmament, uh, uh, separating the waters above and the waters below. And of course, one of my favorite, Werner von Braun's headstone, which is just the year he was born, the year he died, and the, the, the passage says Psalms 19.1. And I didn't know what Psalms 19 one was. I had to look it up. Mm -hmm. And it says, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. It's like, why would the fa father of rocket science be talking about a dome structure from the grave? Exactly. Why, why would he do this? It's like, oh, I know why I did this because, you know, he's, he's, he's letting it, uh, letting it all out. Right. Anyway. Sorry. Awesome. What else That's awesome. Um, I think, let me see. I think that might have been all the questions that I had written down, and really? yeah, I that's know. all you got. That's all I know, questions? right? I didn't. I didn't have very many. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not very skilled at interviews. No, no, no. Past, it's okay. So, Did you? All right. Um, well, forget about the questions so, then. Okay. Do you have anything personal? I mean, you've been watching what's been going on in the in the Flyers community. Is there any anything that you know caught your caught your attention? It's like, yeah, if I I really wanted. I mean, and it doesn't have to be a professional question. What's uh, what inside oh. scoop? I'm actually doing a chapter uh, called Deep Dish in the book where I talk about, you know, just personal conversations I've had with different flat earthers over the years. Nice. Awesome. That's really cool. I'm looking forward to reading that. Um, yeah. yeah, I I don't know. Yeah, I, just, I started my channel because um, I was like super excited about flat earth and I um I got on a couple of flat earth debates and was able to share a couple of videos and then my phone wouldn't allow me to get on there again. And so then that kind of, that kind of halted me. And then I started making just other videos and then YouTube changed it. So you can't live stream unless you have a thousand subscribers. That is very um, new. Yes. You wonder yeah. if they almost changed that for us. I, I really wonder. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of flat earthers. I mean, it's going to take a while for people to get to a thousand subs nowadays. Exactly. Yeah. And so I was, I was trying to commit to like a Friday live stream, um, just, just random, whatever, you know, sometimes I read to people, um, other times I'll just make a video. Now that I have a computer though, it'll be easier to do like screen sharing videos and whatnot. Um, sure. Cause I'm actually in the middle of one that uh, you had mentioned on a strange world, the 1561 Nuremberg event. Yeah. And, the, um, the greatest UFO sighting of all yeah, time. Yeah. So I looked that up and it was really interesting. And so I just uh, snapped some pictures from that and I just need to throw some audio into it. But that um, that should be my next video that I'm making. But oh, yeah. um, it, I, I cannot overstress that one where, I mean, the Americans lord knows we love to take credit for things and mm -hmm. uh especially the american military and it's like it's like oh yeah Ro and don't get me wrong roswell is a great story and it's the only modern story that's out there mm -hmm. it's it's kind of like talking about volcanoes mm -hmm. there's only one modern volcano that that ever did any damage and that was uh, mount st helens mm -hmm. you know, right right down the road from here in washington yeah exactly. that was in 1980 before that, you had to go back to, you know, the old, the old stories, which mm -hmm. was like Pompeii and Krakatoa exactly. and, you know, volcanoes that were legendary. Um, with the UFOs, that was the same way. Uh, before Roswell, you had, oh, I don't know, maybe the 1899 Aurora, uh, Texas sighting where, uh, where a UFO smashed through a thing. But again, you had no photography. There were no newspapers really mm -hmm. of any, of uh, any consequence that covered it. So, but if you go to the 1561 Nuremberg event, it's fascinating. It's mm -hmm. absolutely because it was over an entire. It was Roswell was quiet. It happened in a in a farmer's field, right. off you know off of a small town in New Mexico. Whereas the the Nuremberg event, it was one of the biggest cities in Europe. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And and this thing was just happening. Everybody was just watching it for a whole hour. It was it was yeah. just the most fascinating thing ever. And yeah. yet, you know, people don't don't talk about it. You know, scientists, oh, it was sun dogs. You know, it was some <laughs> yeah. atmospheric thing. It's like they no. were fighting <laughs> for a whole hour. Exactly. To, to where they drew it. And there were three factions and it made all the newspapers. Yeah. I mean, had an entire city just I mean, an hour is such a long time for an aerial battle. Exactly. You know, I mean, you're. You're, I mean, think about how long it takes. I mean, this first thing in the morning, right? You were having breakfast mm-hmm. of, I don't know, again, whatever they ate, toast and schnitzengluben or whatever. <laughs> and you're you're eating. I mean, you, you get the check. You know, it's like, oh, yeah. I mean, to the, where the sketch artist literally had time to come out and draw the whole exactly. thing. Exactly. You know, not, not like it's like, oh, I think I remembered it. No, they drew it as it mm-hmm. happened. And yeah. it was, it's a gorgeous woodcut. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you're looking at this thing going, you know, a cloudless day. Yeah. It's, you know, it's sorry. Awesome. <laughs> sorry. It's, it's a fantastic event. Yeah. So. I love it. So yeah, but just the, the pictures, even though like all of them are drawings, they're, they're just awesome. Cause yeah. it's just like, what the heck is that? Yeah. I mean, and so, yeah, I kind of think that I might start just doing videos like that, just like type in a random date and um, city sure. and see what story pops up. Cause yeah, I love, I love just random good stories like that. And I um, agree. I yeah. Agree. And um, um, oh, yeah, one thing I think that came up was, um, was alien. So how did that change for you before and after flat or thinking? About uh, that? It changed quite a bit in that it, it changed, it was relative to the universe itself. So if the universe isn't this monstrous, empty thing, this ridiculous size thing where there's nothing in it, Carl Sagan always complained, it's like, wow, you know, it seems like a lot, a lot of wasted space. <laughs> right. uh, and you took it down to a one-room apartment, that meant that the aliens, well, and I don't even call them aliens anymore, I call them basically old versions of us, the previous mm-hmm. civilizations, are in here with us. They're not from Mars and Jupiter and Venus and distant mm-hmm. galaxies. I mean, no offense to all the writers of science fiction. I mean, we, I mean, I think this is one of the reasons why the globe model was introduced was to inspire imagination. Mm. Uh, but what I mean is the aliens are older. Think of it this way. Because uh, it's, it's amazing how fast you can turn uh, what we consider it to be a normal culture into an advanced civilization. Let's mm-hmm. say there was a war that broke out. World War Three starts tomorrow. Well, all the military bunkers seal up like Cheyenne Mountain and all the deep underground mm-hmm. bases that we have. And within a very short amount of time, because people, when it comes to survival, all the other stuff goes out the window. Mm-hmm. History technology i mean we go back to the freaking 1800s almost Mm -hmm. immediately i mean we turn into the amish overnight (laughs) Uh, and yeah you you know you for you you know how to do basic stuff building houses Mm -hmm. and you know basic stuff but the advanced technology no that gets it thrown out the window i mean lost and forgotten well think of just a couple generations like let's say 40 years later you know, how, how much civilization has changed. We've all seen apocalypse movies. They're, they're not that much of a stretch. Well, then some of the military come out of their bunkers with helicopters. Mm. How do you explain helicopters to a child that's never seen an aircraft before only mm. 40 years later? And that's our civilization. To them, they would be akin to not only an advanced civilization, but almost godlike. Right. You know, if yeah. you saw fighters and those are just, and that's just 40 years, what you could do. And if it was a hundred years, everybody would lost. Anyone that even remembered those things is gone. Oh yeah. You would and see that, just like cave drawings of helicopters yeah. and like, look at this mythical thing that people think they, they Oh yeah. And you could see, dig up like an know? old weathered textbook. It's like, oh, you know, our old, our old texts talk about crafts like these <laughs> and the men who flew Legend them. says. <laughs> yeah. And so no aliens, trust me when I say this, it is so easy to create, you know, an, an alien type setting. And so I think I f- firmly believe that that civilizations have their time here, and when that time is up, they get transitioned off, and a new civilization comes in for whatever reason. I don't care if it's an entertainment or prison or lab experiment. I don't care, uh, because what the point is is that you don't need them to be millions of light years away or even interdimensionally. I mean, they could be subterranean. For all we know, because remember, if most of our civilization lives from zero to 5,000 feet, you know, one mile up, Mm -hmm. I mean, you make a cave 10 miles up, you know, you could you could put an entire civilization subterranean so easily. 
And that appears to be where they're going most of the time anyway. I mean, how many UFO sightings do we have to see in the water where they're mm -hmm. going into the, the deep oceans or going into the mountains mm -hmm. or going into places in the desert and you can't find any trace of them? All I know is there seems to be a protocol in place. There seems to be rules. So whoever these guys are, and there's got to be a whole bunch of different civilizations out there, mm -hmm. uh, they're not allowed to interact with us directly. Not, I mean, yeah, you can go off the fringe, pull off a few hikers here, somebody in a rowboat there, stuff mm -hmm. like that. But you can't show up on Main Street USA and come out and say, hey, everybody, and, you know, take some selfies, sign a few right. autographs, and then leave. Because, uh, like we've seen in Star Trek, there's a reason why the Prime Directive exists, mm -hmm. which is you would start <laughs> a new religion instantly if you oh, did. People yeah, would it's... freak out. If you left anything, it's like, oh, yeah, here. Uh, here's a t-shirt, right? That t-shirt would then become the Shroud of Turin. It would exactly. be hung up and it would be a <laughs> church revolving around the alien t-shirt that was dropped off. And people would kill for it. People would exactly. swear it had mystical powers. Even though it might just be, you know, I went to Earth and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. You know. So. <laughs> right, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I, I feel like the... Like, we're... It seems like we're being really hyped up for, like, something like that happening. Yes. Like, it seems lately there's, every day almost, there's, like, a new meteor threat or, like, other kind of just nonsense threat or whatever of, like, something possibly coming here. And, and like, I'm just so skeptical about everything that I'm, like, like, I don't know that I would, like, if... God himself actually came down here. I'm like, I don't know that I would actually believe it. I'd be like, I'll be respectful, but like, I don't know that I'll be like, oh, yep, that's my savior. There it is. And, well, be like, mm, and there's, and you're trick. absolutely right like, because, because the science fiction community over the last 60 years has really watered down the concept of an advanced being slash deity. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's say, I mean, let's say a giant golden spaceship landed in Paris. Right. Mm -hmm. And whoever can and by the way, whoever comes out of this spaceship, little tip if you guys are listening, whoever comes out has to be better looking than us mm -hmm. in some way. They and and there's only certain colors. In fact, you can't even choose one of the colors we have. Mm -hmm. So you can't be black or brown or red or yellow yeah, or pale white. Shining because, with light. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, and 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 you also I, I was thinking, well, maybe you could be blue, like the Avatar people. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem is the ancient Hindu gods are blue. So and mm. the jinn from the Middle East are also blue. So it's like, okay, so then what do you got? You got maybe silver or gold or glowing. Right. Know, some sort of you gotta have some sort of special effect. You gotta have exactly. some sort of animation, because if it's anything else, you automatically have a demographic against you. You know, mm -hmm. if you if they come out and they're black, it's like oh boy. You know, right. there's a whole bunch of people who's like nope, can't trust them, and white nope, can't trust them, and red. It's like there's too too many, so it's very limited spectrum. Mm -hmm. Sorry, but whoever shows up, you're gonna have this weird. Uh, division, which is there's some people they're going to be saying, oh, well, they're a, you know advanced race and we must respect them as that and you know give us the answers to the universe, space mm -hmm. man, <laughs> or you're going to have or, or you're going to have people just bowing down immediately, saying right. this these this is obviously part of our religion, and uh, it's like okay, uh, well, I don't want to get into too much of that, but, <laughs> yeah, it's... but yeah, there's there's a problem. So yes, whoever shows up, there's going to be skeptical skeptics either way. Exactly. Which is whoever it is, yeah. it's like, are they an advanced civilization? Are they are the harbingers of doom, or are they benevolent? And do they have our, you know, whoever it is, bad man, they better have their script down. Because <laughs> if they don't come out immediately and say something akin to "We come in peace." Yeah. Which sounds cliche, but you got to use some sort of verbiage along those lines. You're going to, you know, it's going to be misinterpreted and overanalyzed because exactly. now with the hive mind, whatever they say is going to, I mean, we're sounding, talking about like it's inevitable, right? Um, <laughs> whatever they say, though, will be analyzed by six billion smartphones. Mm -hmm. And people are going to be breaking it down way worse than Game of Thrones. <laughs> so they're going to, they are going to overanalyze this to death. And so, yeah, I, I'd be skeptical too. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be gonna be interesting. It'll be like 
three groups of people you know the religious ones are like yep this is our creator we're here and then the atheists are just like you people are insane and then the splat earthers who are like well that's kind of cool but i still don't know like right uh... well and and also we'd be the flat earthers are going to be waiting for you know the breakdown which is okay you're gonna let it out of the bag that the world isn't what we think it is Mm -hmm. and the little hint on maybe who built this place yeah and whoever shows up i mean are they gonna take false credit Uh, you know do you show up and say whoever it is like oh yeah we built this place because honestly i've said this several times now i said look you're also you also have to let the world governments off the hook Mm -hmm. if they're in league with them saying oh by the way the world governments kept the secret because we told them to uh because it was in your best interest Mm-hmm. You don't want to be too heavy handed. You don't want to say, well, we told them to or we were just going to vaporize the place. <laughs> right. Uh, or do you come or you come back and say, we told them to because we didn't think you were ready. We mm-hmm. say, you know, we you know, like like the children of the cosmos. You had to grow and develop to where now you are ready to accept the information. Again, some basic sci-fi writing there, but it's mm-hmm. true. I mean, that's it's... that's we've we've heard that story many times. I, I mean, going all the way back to um, the day the Earth stood still, mm-hmm. back in the 1950s, not the Keanu Reeves version, but the earlier version, where they they came down and once once we got to a level where we could develop atomic weapons, that's when the that's when they stepped in and said, okay, just so you know, you're never going to be allowed to do space travel ever. Because you are just, you know, like this virus. It's like all you'd all you would want to do if you got spaceships is conquer. That's mm-hmm. all you do. And really, and the, which is interesting that that movie would be made about ourselves in the 1950s during the Cold War. But it's true. I mean, man, I, women get a pass. Men are like that. Oh uh, yeah. I yeah. mean, look look at um, the barrier. You know, when uh, when they found the outer marker, when they found the dome, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, what do you think men are first going to do? It's like, dome, huh? You know, hit it. You know, ding, can, ding, can ding. we break it's, it? It's like, <laughs> get the cannon, roll in the cannon, <laughs> exactly. right? And, and it's like, cannon's not working. Get we the need biggest bomb. We, cost, yeah, it's like, and and they did. They they went really really quickly to like, uh, you know, literally those first three shots were were low megaton, and this has been megaton was a pricey option back in the fifties. You know, it wasn't like you can get a megaton in a box of cereal nowadays. You know, megaton was really hard to get, and after those first shots, they're going. Got anything bigger? Nope. <laughs> Uh, that's it then. So at that point, it's like let's just map this thing out because uh, seriously, if a megaton device cannot breach whatever lock you're trying to crack, yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna be cracking yeah. it with, with brute force. Sorry. Exactly. That's anyway. Interesting that what, what? like all the it seems like the big hype of the the nukes and atomic stuff like that was right around the time of the moon landing too and then now like all that stuff it's just kind of it's like i don't know it's like you always hear about like oh this country has has uh these weapons and blah 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 but it's just i don't know and yet nobody uses them which is the interesting part i mean i have heard some i i watched some video i remember a couple years ago that they were talking about that they used backpack nukes in uh, syria uh, and which which may be true. I mean, some of those explosives were amazingly powerful. Mm-hmm. Now, if they weren't nukes, I mean, I'm one of those believers that does believe in fission devices because I, de- I believe in radiation. Mm-hmm. I believe yeah. that there are elements that can be cracked, you know, that can be used to, to create energy in, during, in a fission device. And if that's mm-hmm. true, then, then it, if you don't want to call it nuclear, that, that's fine. Um, but yeah, it's interesting that, that the only country to ever use nukes on another country was the United States. Hmm. And nobody did afterwards. I mean, mm-hmm. that's a Hiroshima and Nagasaki to where it was used so sparingly, even though there's, I don't know, at least 20 countries that have them now, mm-hmm. um, uh, that we even tried to remove that from our history books a few years ago. Mm. Which, because, you know, the United States doesn't want to be the villain. We want to be the white right. hats. And it's so. like, yeah, I get it. But come on, we're not exactly the white hats. We are <laughs> at the very, very best days. I think we're the anti-hero. Yeah, where, exactly. You know, <laughs> the, the whole Mad Max character. We do a lot of bad things, sometimes yeah. for the right reasons, but most of the time just because we think we can, we figured out how to rule the world. Mm-hmm. And yeah. It's, it's like, yeah. I mean, and, and for people to think, oh, you know, America forever. Yeah. Uh, it's like, look, Rome fell, and Rome did it. Yeah, 
Rome did it way better than us. They own, they had everything. In fact, the only reason Rome fell is because they forgot who they were mm -hmm. after a thousand years of, I mean, they didn't even like the, sorry, I got to go off on a quick little tangent, like the it. Roman, famous <laughs> Roman short sword. They didn't even change it for 600 years. <laughs> That's how well they were, they, they had perfected what they were doing. Uh, they, in fact, they, their policy was, which is very similar to the Borg, uh, was if you, if you attack an army and they were not shy about it, there was no pride, which was, which is like, oh yeah, your catapult's better than ours. Okay. That's ours now. That is now the Roman catapult. We're designing <laughs> our catapults like that. And they would absorb the best things and throw out stuff that they didn't think was as good. And to where they just got better and better and better. And it was like the Borg in, mm -hmm. in a way. And so um, America is not Rome. You know, we, exactly. we, we have invaded the world with our media mm -hmm. and pop yeah. culture. Yeah. That's what we did. The, and we did, I will say that, we did that extremely well. Yeah. We, it's like this, we, we were the cool kids and, and whatever the cool kids did, other people mimic. It's like, wow, mm -hmm. what are the cool kids doing? Let's do that. <laughs> and, and if we, and if they didn't take it, if they just didn't take our broadcast directly, they just copied it. I mean, how many versions of, of America's Got Talent are there? And you know, granted, we steal from the British. Mm -hmm. as well and so uh but that's how we invaded so yeah america we want to be the white hats and we want it and we are everywhere I'll, I'll tell you a real quick story uh and then unfortunately i i've got to grab something to eat because I, my next thing's in about yeah no, minutes. no problem. but i, I can tell you this story because this will make sense to you mm -hmm. so i was in egypt and i was at the the temple of the queen or the queen's temple <clears throat> and there was a bunch of school kids, Egyptian school kids, like a uh, like field trip for a whole bunch of Egyptian school kids. And they're freaking out around us, you know, the Americans. It's like, what the hell? Why are you guys like looking at us like we're something's really, really great? Mm -hmm. And the tour guide says, oh, you're the first um, <clears throat> Americans that these kids have seen outside of television. And I go, oh, wow. I go, what television exactly are we speaking of? And they said, <laughs> oh, you know. The um the television's about the, the television shows about American life. Um Dallas, Dynasty, Falcon's <laughs> Crest, those shows. The shows my granny watched. Like. Well, not just that, but they were shows that, cool. that back in the eighties that, that showed um Americans, you know, it's like that's how all Americans live, right? Mm -hmm. They're all, you know, these amazing, you know, dynasty, you know, these weird, you know, everyone lived in mansions, everybody drove right. amazing cars. And I go, those are the only shows you show out here? And I remember this was back in, this is maybe 10 years ago. And and they go, and, and I thought, oh, how very clever. The Americans let shows out. They used them strategically. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get a certain point across to different countries, that's what you show. I mean, because right. why, would, why would you believe it? It's like these shows, they're not historical documents, right? But... At the same time, if you show them to children, why wouldn't they think they're historical documents? Yeah, exactly. And so it was fascinating. I, I was like, oh, I get it. I get it. The American media used as a, um, as, as a, it, it sounds redundant, American media used as a propaganda device. But <laughs> it's not just yeah. straight but... up propaganda. It's American right. entertainment that's used as propaganda device in, as, in another country. I thought it was brilliant. So. Okay, so anything else? Um, I think that's that's probably it. I mean, I'm sure after we sign off, I'll think of ten more things that I'm like, oh, I should have asked him that. But that's, that's right. Uh, yeah, down the road, <laughs> we'll do this again. Awesome. And, uh, but thank you, thank you. And I'm thank sorry, where you. are you right now? You're in. Oh, I'm I'm in Renton, so I'm a neighbor of you, kind of. So not far away. Yeah, not far at all. Yeah. I am going down and doing a podcast. Sorry, my voice is. <clears throat> I gotta eat something. The um, uh, I'm doing a podcast down in Tacoma, uh, in about a week and a half. Oh, and nice! I'm driving nice. down for it. They said, "Oh, come on now!" And it's a big podcast. It's like, okay, nice. I don't even know if they have a YouTube channel, but I, I'm gonna do it. So awesome! Yeah, That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on. This has been great. So. Thank you much. And what'll happen is, is the second you hang up, YouTube will build this. Okay. And then it'll put it in the window, and then you can download it and do whatever you want with it. 
Perfect. Awesome. Well, All thank right. you, Mark. Have a great day. You too. Talk soon. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.